Starting with the latest in the Russia-Ukraine war, Russian air defenses have shot down two armed drones headed for Moscow. This is according to Moscow's mayor, Sergei Sobyanin. He said one drone was downed on the southern outskirts of the city and the second was shot down in the Minsk highway area. This was the third attempted drone attack on Moscow within a week. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that the country will fight back against Russia in the Black Sea. This is to ensure that its waters are not blockaded and it can import and export grain. Zelensky's comments come as Ukrainian maritime drones packed with explosives damaged a Russian warship and a tanker. Tension in the Black Sea escalated last month since Russia withdrew from a deal that allowed the safe export of grain. Germany has offered to extend the deployment of three Patriot air defense units in Poland until the end of 2023. Along with this, some 300 German soldiers have been sent to the Polish town of Zamosk. It's about 50 kilometers away from Ukraine's border. The deployment began after a stray Ukrainian missile struck a Polish village in November. It raised fears of the war in Ukraine spilling over the border. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that Russia's Wagner mercenary group is taking advantage of instability in Niger. Blinken said he does not think that Russia or Wagner instigated Niger's coup. However, U.S. thinks that Wagner is possibly manifesting itself in parts of the Sahel region. Wagner is believed to have thousands of fighters in Central African Republic and Mali. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif will write to the country's President Arif Alvi to dissolve the National Assembly. This will bring the current government's term to a premature end. The government announced that assemblies will be dissolved three days ahead of the mandated period. Elections will be held within 90 days. The World Bank has announced that it will halt new loans to Uganda. This is because the country's controversial anti-LGBTQ law. The lender said, and I quote, Uganda's Anti-Homosexuality Act fundamentally contradicts the World Bank Group's values. The law imposes capital punishment for quote-unquote aggravated homosexuality. A 20-year jail term has been introduced for promoting homosexuality. Iraq's media regulator has directed all social media companies do not use the term homosexuality. The word homosexuality will be replaced with sexual deviance. The Iraqi Communications and Media Commission has also banned the term gender. Iraq has not explicitly criminalized homosexuality. However, loosely defined morality clauses in penal code target members of the LGBTQ community. U.S. President Joe Biden has said that he will be traveling to Vietnam shortly. This is because the country wants to elevate its relationship with the U.S. and become a major partner. Biden made remarks while speaking at a fundraiser in New Mexico. In April, Vietnamese Prime Minister Pha Minh Chin and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken had expressed a desire to deepen ties. A German national has been sentenced to 81 years in prison in Kenya. This comes after a Kenyan court found him guilty of several counts of child abuse and the possession of child pornography. 74-year-old Thomas Scheller was charged in 2020 after it was alleged that he had sexually abused a 13-year-old child. He was accused of showing two minors child pornography. Scheller was arrested outside the German embassy in Nairobi. Japan held a ceremony to mark the 78th anniversary of the Nagasaki atomic bombing. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida addressed attendees via video message. The Nagasaki atomic bombing happened three days after a nuclear attack was carried out in Hiroshima. The two bombings killed more than 200,000 people. Thousands more died later due to injuries and radiation-related illnesses. Moving to climate, heavy rain has pounded South Korea's southern regions as Typhoon Kanun approaches. Typhoon could make landfall in South Korea on Thursday. It has forced authorities to cancel all flights at the Jeju International Airport. 
The storm has also prompted the closure of dozens of sea routes and roadways. Meanwhile, heavy winds and rain from Typhoon Kanun continue to batter Japan. This comes as another storm approached from the east to possibly threaten the capital city of Tokyo. Trains and flights have been cancelled in some cities. Japan's meteorological agency issued weather warnings to many parts of the country. Strong winds, intense rain and landslides hit parts of Norway. Villages have been flooded, power lines have been knocked out and transport has come to a standstill. Norwegian emergency services have evacuated hundreds of people in various locations. A fierce storm lashed the US state of Massachusetts on Tuesday. It has damaged property and left cars submerged in flood water. A building sustained severe damage after the heavy downpour. Meanwhile, footage shows a large tornado sweeping through the US state of Colorado. The National Weather Service has also issued a tornado warning for East Central Washington County. Okay. Americans are enduring extreme yes. weather throughout the country. Heat waves, thunderstorms, hail, and flooding and tornadoes are all wreaking havoc. A video shows an unusual water spout phenomenon in Italy's Avuroso region. Water spouts are tornadoes that occur over a body of water but never reach the land. They are characterized by a funnel shaped cloud. Smoke from fires raging across Russia's vast forest wilderness has engulfed the eastern city of Yaktus. It has forced citizens to close doors and windows despite the summer heat. Residents are now wearing breathing masks. Emergencies have been declared in seven regions of Russia due to the fires. Around 4,000 people are currently involved in fighting the fire. Leaders of eight South American countries have pledged to protect the Amazon rainforest. This was during the Amazon summit in the Brazilian city of Valem. The countries signed a joint declaration to promote sustainable development and end deforestation. However, the summit stopped short of agreeing to key demands by environmentalists and indigenous groups. This includes a pledge to end illegal deforestation by 2030 and oil exploration in the Amazon region. Meanwhile, the illegal dumping of industrial waste is polluting the Brazilian city of Belém. It is threatening the flora, fauna and livelihoods of those living near the region. Belém is the main entry point for the Amazon rainforest. The city is also the host of the Amazon summit. The International Whaling Commission had issued an extension alert for the endangered Vaquita for voice. A report by the IWC showed an 83% drop in the Vaquita population between 2015 and 2018. Its population is estimated to have shrunk to less than a dozen. On to business and tech now. Reports say Walt Disney has created a task force to study artificial intelligence. The company wants to see how AI can be implemented across its businesses. The task force was reportedly formed earlier this year. It is looking to develop in-house AI applications and form partnerships with startups. Disney's move comes despite the ongoing strike among Hollywood actors and writers. They are concerned that AI may pose an existential threat to their jobs. Reports say Universal Music and Google are in talks to license artists, voices and melodies. This is for artificial intelligence generated songs or AI generated songs. The goal is to develop a tool for fans to create tracks legitimately using the artist's AI voices. It will also pay the owners holding the copyright. The report added that artists are free to opt out of the process. A US judge has rejected Google's bid to dismiss a lawsuit. The lawsuit claims that the tech giant invaded the privacy of millions of people by secretly tracking their internet usage. The suit alleges that Google's analytics, cookies and apps let the company track their user activity. This is even when they set the Google Chrome browser to incognito mode and other browsers to private browsing mode. 
Canadian news industry groups have asked the country's antitrust regulator to investigate Meta platforms. This is over the company's decision to block news on its platforms in the country. The publishers accuse Meta of abusing its dominant position in the market. Last week, Meta started blocking news on its Facebook and Instagram platforms for all users in Canada. This was in response to a law requiring some companies to pay for sharing news articles. Meanwhile, Meta Platforms is asking a court in Norway to stop a fine imposed by the country's data regulator. Norway's data regulator fined Facebook's parent company over privacy breaches. Meta is now asking for a temporary injunction against the order. The company's petition will be presented on the 22nd of August during a two-day hearing. Co-working space provider WeWork has raised doubts about about its ability to continue operations. This is over sustained losses and cancelled membership to its office spaces. The company has said it will try to cut costs, increase revenue and raise capital over the next 12 months. Ratings agency Moody's has said that the US banking sector is still strong. This is after the agency downgraded some small to mid-sized lenders yesterday. The company has also warned that it may cut the ratings of several other banks. The company's managing director, Anna Arsov, said that the move was in response to some economic headwinds. Arsov added that it did not mean to indicate that the system is broken. US regulators have fined nine Wall Street companies more than $500 million. This includes companies like Wells Fargo, BNP Paribas, and Soci Ete General. The fine is over company employees using personal messaging apps to discuss deals, trades, and other business. Taiwanese chipmaker TSMC has said that its board has approved the construction of the firm's first European factory. The factory will be built in Germany and the company will invest nearly $4 billion in this project. TSMC has been in talks with Germany since 2021 to build a fabrication plant in the country. China fell into deflation in the month of July. This is according to the country's National Bureau of Statistics. The Consumer Price Index or CPI for the month dropped 0.3% or 0.3% year on year. CPI is one of the most popular measures of inflation and deflation. Meanwhile, the country's producer price index also fell for the 10th consecutive month. It was down 4.4% from a year earlier. Moving to sports, in cricket, India beat the West Indies by 7 wickets in the 30 T20 match. The West Indies batted first and scored 159 runs for the loss of 5 wickets in their innings. Then, Indian batter Surya Kumar Yadav stole the show. He smashed 83 runs in just 44 balls. India chased down their target with 13 deliveries remaining. The West Indies lead the five-match T20 series 2-1. Veteran pacer Trent Bolt has been included, included rather, in New Zealand's team. This is for their upcoming one-day international series against England. 34-year-old Trent Bolt will join the Kiwi squad after a gap of almost 12 months. Meanwhile, Kyle Jamieson has also been included in the 15-man squad. New Zealand will play five ODI matches against England from the 8th to the 15th of September. In football, France beat Morocco 4-0 at the Women's World Cup. France scored two goals in the 15th and 20th minute. Then, Eugene Lee Somers double sealed a thumping win for France. They will next play co-hosts Australia in the quarter-final on Saturday. Meanwhile, Colombia beat Jamaica 1-0 at the World Cup. Catalina Osme scored the only goal of the match in the 51st minute. Colombia have now reached a Women's World Cup quarter-finals for the first time and they will play England on Saturday. English Premier League club Arsenal are closing in on signing goalkeeper David Raya. According to reports, Arsenal and Brentford have agreed to a transfer of the Spanish goalkeeper. The financial details have not been officially disclosed. But reports say 
Raya is set to join Arsenal for a transfer fees of around 38 million dollars. Chelsea forward Christopher Nkunu has been ruled out for an extended period. The Frenchman has undergone surgery after suffering an injury to his right knee. He will miss out as Chelsea will play Liverpool in their 2023-2024 season opener on Sunday. The Champions League qualifier between clubs AEK Athens and Dynamo Zagreb was postponed. This was after fans of the two clubs clashed against each other yesterday. One fan of AEK Athens died in the violence after he was stabbed multiple times. At least eight other fans were wounded. Police officials have arrested 98 people in connection with the incident. Both the clubs have condemned the violence. In tennis, world number five Casper Ruud advanced to the round of 16 at the Canadian Masters. The tournament is being played in the Canadian city of Toronto. Norway's Ruud beat Czech Republic's Jiri Leheka 7-6 and 4-6 in straight sets. This is despite Ruud committing 21 unforced errors. He will now play his next round tomorrow. Meanwhile, Caroline Wozniacki made a stunning comeback to tennis after retiring in the year 2020. Denmark's Wozniacki cruised into the second round at the Canadian Masters. She beat Australia's Kimberly Birrell 6-2 and 6-2 in straight sets. Wozniacki will next play the newly crowned Wimbledon champion Marketa Wondrusova on Thursday. India's short putt champion Tajinder Singh Tour has pulled out of this year's World Athletics Championship. The World Athletics Championship will be held in Hungary from the 19th to the 27th of August. Tour is dropping out of the athletics meet because he is still rec recovering rather from a growing injury which he suffered in the month of July. Meanwhile, Indian high jumper Tejaswin Shankar will also skip the World Athletics Championship. Shankar said he would rather prepare for the Asian Games which will begin in September. In entertainment, Canadian rapper Tory Lanez has been sentenced to 10 years in prison. He has been sentenced for shooting fellow artist Megan Thee Stallion during an argument in the year 2020. The sentence comes seven months after his conviction in the case. He was found guilty of carrying a loaded and unregistered firearm in a vehicle with assault with a semi-automatic handgun and discharging a firearm with gross negligence. Lanez's attorney has called the sentencing incredibly harsh. Actor Billy Porter has revealed that he had to sell his house amid the ongoing Hollywood writers' strike in order to save money. He said, and I quote, I was supposed to be in a new movie and on a new television show starting in September. None of that is happening now. The actor also criticized Disney CEO Bob Iger for saying that the WGA and sag after strikers were not being realistic with their demands. American talent company Endeavor CFO Jason Lublin has said that the Hollywood strike is likely to cost the firm about $25 million per month in revenue. Endeavor CEO R. Emanuel added that it will be months, not days, before the business comes back up. Emanuel also clarified that his company continues to be aligned with its actor and writer clients. Actor Alexa Davalos will not be returning in the fifth season of CBS's FBI Most Wanted. So far, there is no hint on who will play the character of Special Agent Christine Gaines. Davalos joined the drama series in the beginning of season three. Amid two Hollywood strikes, it is unclear when the show will return for a fifth season. Jeff Rowe, the director of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, and the movie's producers have said that animators of the movie were taken care of and were not overworked. They said that the staff could work on the movie while maintaining a good work-life balance. So revealed that the staff worked three days a week, while some opted to work from home in Scotland. Nominations for the 2023 MTV Video Music Awards are out. Singer Taylor Swift has eight nominations including Video of the Year, Artist of the Year, and Song of the Year. Other artists nominated in the 
Video of the Year category are Miley Cyrus for Flowers, Sam Smith for Unholy, and Doja Cat for Attention. Artists nominated for Song of the Year are Rima and Selena Gomez for Calm Down, Olivia Rodrigo, and Olivia Rodrigo for Vampire, and Steve Lacey for Bad Habit. The Made in America Festival has been cancelled this year. Organizers have cited severe circumstances outside of production control behind the decision. The headliners for the event included singer Lizzo. She recently faced a lawsuit for sexual harassment and creating a toxic working environment. Sex and the City star Chris North has admitted to straying from his wife. He also doubled down on denying sexual assault claims. In December 2021, several women accused Chris North of sexual assault. North called the accusations ridiculous. His Sex and the City character, Mr. Big, is no longer part of the spin-off. In fact, his co-stars Sarah Jessica Parker, Cynthia Nixon and Christine Davis issued a joint statement in support of the accusers, commending them for coming forward. Actor Jada Pinkett Smith has shared a glimpse of her hair growth journey. In an Instagram post, Smith said, This hair is acting like it's trying to make a comeback. Still have some trouble spots, but we'll see. The actor has spoken about her battle with alopecia over the years. Alopecia is a form of hair loss that can be hereditary or because of hormonal changes. And finally, Streaming platform Max will be paying a tribute to late actor Angus Cloud. An in-memoriam card will be added to some episodes of the drama series called Euphoria. Cloud played, played the role of a drug dealer in the show. The actor's mother recently shed light on his final moments and clarified that his death was unintentional.